Okay, so I I, uh, I should have maybe videotaped more of the, the piston to valve clearance tests, but I went ahead and did um, the um, clay the clay method, the clay test, and I've got over a hundred thousandths on the intake um, and even more on the exhaust. So because of this being, I guess because of the disc piston disc dished pistons, it kind of flip flops uh, than what you'd normally see, but. The, uh, the clearances look great, and that was with 51 thousandths. I, I'm going to check my compression ratio and see if I have room to, um, you know, go with a thinner gasket. But I, I, if I remember correctly, I think I'll be okay even with the 51. We'll see. Anyway, so right now all I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to finish up my day here. I'm going to put the pistons back in, and I might button up the uh, timing set, put the, the, um, the cam plate that I'm going to use on there, and I still have the side main bolts to put in because I ordered new ones. And I have the, the plugs, the hex plugs to put in and see where I go from there. But for now, let's, let's, um, this is how I go about putting the pistons in. Um, my ring orientation, first of all, I'm not, I can't really see if I'm in frame here. Uh, dot means forward. And the way I do it is I put the oil expander gap at the right side, perpendicular to the wrist pin. So right there. And then I put the the top and bottom rails for the oil like that. So they're they're about evenly spaced. The three gaps are evenly spaced, and I always put the expander on that side. So uh, my top ring, my top comp uh, compression ring, I put directly to the right, and the second ring I put directly to the left. So they're 180 degrees across from each other. Uh, I saw that on a uh, diagram a, a while back and I just been using it um, and right now I have a good amount of assembly lube on the bearing and there's oil a light oiling on the rings in the piston so we're gonna send it home uh, I put the crank journal all the way at the bottom just to minimize me hitting it with anything that would uh, nick it up uh, again here's the ARP uh, tapered ring compressor. I've already used it. I already did the other side. This figured you'd be able to see easier this way. This thing is fantastic. Um, normally when you put a piston in, you always see on like, you know, on the guys on TV and, and all, they, they grab a, a handle to a dead blow hammer and they give it a couple wax, like a, you know, sand filled hammer, give it a couple wax and it snaps in. That's how I was doing it with the other ring compressor. With this thing, I can just push it straight down. It, it's like there's no rings on it at all. So I, I get it started in there. So a little bit of the skirt pops out and very carefully get it started and it's uh, you know it's gonna you have to give it a little twist and turn and, and then I just kind of grab it make sure it's seated and then with my thumbs just give it a couple good pushes and that's it I mean there's no it, you feel a slight resistance when you get and when you when your rings hit that but it doesn't even take a whack. I, was, I did one on the other side with the hammer and it just seemed like it was too much. So once you, uh, once you get it down, I like to come under here and just kind of give it some wax until I can get my hand in there to guide the, guide the rod into place. And once it's lined up, give it a good push until it makes contact and then I grab the cap which also has assembly loop and with these cracked rods like I showed you before there's only one way they go on um, there's a flat side and, and a rounded side so it's easy to get it it's e if, the, if the sides weren't so obviously different it would be easy to get them oriented right but when you, when you place the cap up against the rod uh, this is a little easy because I already have it on the rod in there, so there's not as much room for lateral movement. But I like to give it just a little wiggle and just watch the 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 the, uh, the crack to see if it you know a little bit of oil, a little bit of assembly lube seeps out. Uh, just knowing that I got it um, butted up correctly, and then for right now, I'm just doing a snug up. Um, just enough so that it's not moving around, the, the bearing's not going to spin or anything like that when I'm turning the motor over. Uh, when, I'm, when I get all the pistons in, I'm going to turn the motor upside down because it's just easier to work on. And I'll do a torque. Uh, I'll torque all the rod bolts to where they're supposed to be. 
that point, um, I could be done with the uh, short block, but since I'm putting ARPs in, I'm going to do a uh, procedure to put them in where I'm going to remove one bolt, one stock bolt, do a torque, uh, torque sequence with the ARP, you know, and then do the other bolt. So the cap will never be completely unbolted. I don't know if that really makes a difference. Uh, just kind of seems like I uh, might as well do it while I'm here. Um, so that's basically it. That's, uh, like I said, if, if anybody's looking for a good ring compressor, this thing was not cheap. And um, I don't expect I'll ever use it again. So I'll probably be selling it for maybe what it, what it costs, minus a little bit, minus shipping. So somebody will make out on it. Um, and I won't get soaked too bad because it's worth a million bucks for me since it actually works instead of those cheapy compressors. So... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'll film any more today. Maybe when I'm, I mean, maybe when I'm putting the timing set back on. I'm not sure. The rest of it's pretty trivial. It's just screwing things in. So uh, I'll probably take a video when I do the ARP install, just to show how I did it. And if it works, then somebody else can get some reference from it.